Posting isn't private. Beware what you share. In Fairfield County, something new comes across my desk every day. Crimes are committed, cases are solved, and a community is made safe by the hardworking employees of the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to this week with Sheriff Dave Fail on a weekly program here on LSN Television. We're also carried by a number of radio affiliates here in Lancaster and beyond. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week. This program is produced at Fairfield Christian Academy. A number of the students help uh, with the production of the program along with their uh, instructor, J.T. Burcham. Behind the scenes, Kelly Roberts, our executive producer, takes care of lining the guests up, a lot of the good questions and does a lot of good work behind the scene. Back by popular demand, two weeks in a row, Lieutenant Tim Voris. Sheriff, how are you, sir? And our Detective Bureau Commander. I don't even think we mentioned that last week, did we? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure. We talked about a lot of things. We did so. talk about a, yes, a lot of things. So you've been the Detective Bureau Commander uh, 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 off and on for a few years. Yes, sir. And you've done about everything within the sheriff's office, haven't you? Uh, you know, I have throughout my, uh, August will be 30 years, and I've yep. uh, been a supervisor, been a deputy, a supervisor, and a commander in each of the division throughout that time. Yes, sir. So you've been over the jail, over the patrol division, over the detective bureau? Yes, sir. And uh, probably the only thing you have is the... Is the uh, Communications area. Commun I have not been a canine handler either. And you haven't sure. been the canine guy. I've been a horse handler, but not a canine <laughs> handler. <sure. laughs> you know, it's amazing to me how uh, popular the animals are. Yes. And uh, when we have uh, something with the canine, with the mounted unit, uh, the, the public really loves it. And, and uh, Kelly, our, uh, uh, Roberts, our, uh, my assistant, also takes care of social media. And uh, as she can tell you, when we put something up about one of the animals or something like that, watch out because everybody wants to, oh, yes. wants to see that and hear that. They enjoy that. As a matter of fact, the other day we uh, had a couple of detectives, some patrol officers, our SWAT guys, and uh, Sean Malloy took his dog and they went down to Amanda schools and we had a presentation of our department and the kids really enjoyed that they walked through the SWAT truck they walked through the crime scene truck did a, a police uh, canine demonstration and they wow. really enjoyed that demonstration and uh, it was a great time to spend in the community and just share with those kids and uh, kind of give them an idea that we're, we're the nice guys we're here to help you out and they really enjoyed that and had a good time you know and we've had a period of time uh, where we're actually having some billboards uh, in the county, uh, the electronic billboards where we're uh, featuring uh, Deputy Malloy and Carr, our new uh, dog, along with the, the uh, caption, drug dealers beware. Yes. And we did that a few years ago. It's very popular, but we just want to put drug dealers on notice in our community that we're going to be paying attention. We're watching them. We're doing our dead level best to find out who they are and put them in the penitentiary. Exactly. And our detectives are the same level. They have a zero tolerance for people taking advantage of people in this community, especially our seniors. You commit a crime against our seniors and we're going to come after you. We're going to look at you kind of hard because it's not a place for you to take advantage of somebody like that and uh, everybody else that commits a crime. We're going to be tough on crime. Now we talked about this before on the show, but I find this pretty interesting. Uh, uh, coming from uh, some uh, larger police agencies, Washington and Columbus, uh, the, uh, the detectives there uh, are uh, they're specialists. In other words, uh, a homicide detective, all they'll do is investigate homicides. Someone involved in auto thefts, they auto thefts, checks, checks. So they get very good at, and, and they're, they, they, they uh, investigate particular crimes. Where our detectives, your detectives, they investigate everything. So a detective could be investigating a white collar crime today and a, and a double homicide tomorrow. Yeah, and you know, I think we could take our detectives and really place them in any other entity oh, or agency. No and they would really do well because of that. As you start out, you learn here at the sheriff's office that you talk to the neighbors, you fingerprint your crime scenes, you photograph it, you present everything you can, and then it takes that next step up to detective. And there's a lot of patrol officers today that can really do those, those basic crime scene evidence collection type of uh, scenes and present a case to the prosecutor's office 
office and get felony charges filed. Uh, and we support them, we help them with that, through that. But um, yeah, you learn the basics from, from taking that report to taking that case to the grand jury. And uh, we've got a great detectives at the sheriff's office. We just added, and thank you for David Maple. Right. He, uh, just he was a school resource was, officer at Fairfield Union for years. Great school resource officer, did, a, did an amazing job out there. Now he's stepping into the role. He's got experience. He's part of our SWAT team. You know, he does a good job. And we had a chance to use him in uh, the summer before, and he just did a really great job for us. Well, he'll do a good job. Yes. And Dean Rary is going out to Fairfield Union. Dean Rary is stepping out to yeah. Fairfield Union, a school resource officer. Officer, was out there for their graduation uh, a week ago, and uh, it went very well. Now you're, a, those you're a Fairfield Union, uh, you're kind of involved out there, aren't you? Yes, sir. Or you were involved, especially when Annie was there. Yeah, two girls that both attended Fairfield Union schools. Yeah, and both your girls are going into nursing, right? Yes, both wow. are in nursing. Annie's continuing at her, her second year down at Muskingum College, and uh, my other daughter, Lindsay, is at Mount Carmel East. You've got to be very proud of them. Very proud of them. And, you know, I, I, just on a personal note, um, I went to some of the events out there at Fairfield Union. Your daughter was there. And, you know, you're, you have a, 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 a manner about you where you're very friendly and you come up to people and everything. And uh, I could have told who, I, I would have known whose daughter it is. So she walked out, you know, she said, hey, how are you? And she, you know, she's personable and, and uh, just very nice, very yeah, nice right. family. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I had met your grandson. He played for Bloom Carroll yes, basketball. He did. Yeah. And I introduced myself to him on one of the games that I'd been to. And he was out there and just a nice gentleman. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's today is um, we, we need to continue to work towards our youth and, and giving them the tools that they need to be a good, good person in our community, somebody that's really going to help somebody. And that's all I've asked of my daughters is that just add value to somebody's life every day. Opening a door, carrying a book, help them out a little bit because that's kind of what life's about. Absolutely good stuff. Now this uh, summer uh, we've got a lot of, we have some of the parades coming up, some of the festivals, a lot of different things coming up. Yes. Um, busy time for us in the Detective Bureau. Seasonal crimes are going on. People are going to be out uh, regularly. We, we see people that are out blacktop in driveways and different things that come into our community from outside of the community. The con guys? The con guys doing different things like that. So we kind of keep an extra eye on those people that are doing some you know repair work or offering to, to come door to door and different things. So if you see something, uh, something doesn't seem right, somebody comes to your door, contact the sheriff's office. Let us know. Give us a call and let us know what's going on in your neighborhood and we'll check it out. Absolutely. And uh, again, it's it's summertime. Uh, kids are out of school. Uh, typically, we see an uptick as far as the vandalism, unfortunately, yes. and, and those kind of things. Yes. More kids are out. They're out later at night. They're or driving. Out. There's uh, yeah, different things like that that we kind of look at and uh, work with our patrol division on the different type of uh, crimes that are happening in the area. So just keep valuables out of cars. Keep your car locked. Report anything suspicious that you see this summer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as we, um, you know, we, we move along uh, in our program today, uh, something just came to mind that um, a few weeks ago we had uh, Dave Landefeld on. Uh, mm -hmm. Dave's going to be the new uh, municipal court judge. He was the county prosecutor for, wow, I don't know, 30 yeah. years. Yeah, had numerous cases with him. Yeah. Does a great job. And, and an interesting thing he said, and you may want to comment on this as, as the commander of the Detective Bureau, he said today there's such a higher expectation from jurors as far as they have an expectation that you're going to have DNA. They have an expectation you're going to have fingerprints. And so he says sometimes that's not really reality because we don't always, uh, aren't always able to, to get those things, although we have the right person in custody. But he said it's, it, it, he noticed it became increasingly more difficult because um, Today, people see the, the date lines, they see the 48 hours, they see the crime programs on television, uh, CSI, you name it. And so they kind of go in thinking, well, if they don't have that stuff, they must not have the right guy. But the reality is that's not always the case, is it? That's not always the case. And a 45-minute program on television does not depict a <laughs> two-week investigation into a crime scene. And it, it really does take a, a teamwork effort from the law enforcement agency to uh, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation at BCI to process that evidence for us. That's right. To bring that evidence back, to present it to the prosecutor, to grand jury, and, and present that case and kind of lay it out for the jurors to take a look at 
so that they get a fair, equitable look at the complete case from both sides. And uh, we process scenes, we take witness statements, we'll bring people back in and re-interview them and gather as much physical evidence as we can to uh, present that case to the grand jury. And um, several cases where cigarette butts, fingerprints, come back positive to different things that help us guide in our direction to find out who's responsible for that crime. And that takes time. It just doesn't happen overnight. One of the big cases on a national level lately was the case where the executives in Washington, D.C., a, a gentleman, his wife and 10-year-old son were brutally murdered in their home, and then the house uh, was set on fire, that actually they had found some DNA, if I remember correctly, on a pizza crust. Yeah, apparently he had had pizza delivered and set outside the door to the home. And they touched the pizza and they found some discarded pizza and they were able to retrieve some DNA. Yeah, so there's really some remarkable things that the Bureau of Criminal Investigation in our state can do yes. to uh, take a look at that evidence, process it, get some really good results back. Detective Kohler did a great job the other day. He went out, processed a burglary uh, scene, got some fingerprints. We sent that in and it came back with a suspect. So oh, it's great police work. Great police work on our part as the detective. Now, with the, the way the, the, the criminals are, are, are mobile, I know that you guys do a lot of work with the uh, Lancaster detectives and Pickerington. Yes. And, and because you're going to have to do that today. You have to work together. Because if they're breaking in garages in Lancaster, they're breaking in garages in the county. That's exactly it's, right. Yeah. I mean, each entity of law enforcement, we work together. We share a roll call. We send a newsletter out to each of us so we know what's going on. Um, Brian Underwood's been a great detective from Lancaster. We worked on a couple different things here recently with him. And uh, he came up the other day and he said, you know, I, I just feel comfortable coming up here and working with the detectives like I'm in my office. And Isn't that nice? And, and, and I said, well, that's the way we want you to feel. We want you to come up and work together because we're all on the same team. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're coming up uh, with just a, a little less than a, a minute less. Anything uh, la lastly you want to share toward the end of the program? No, uh, I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done. You continue to lead the Sheriff's Office in a positive way, in a professional way, and we continue to make progress in keeping Fairfield County a safe and secure community. Well, we've got a lot of, we've got a, a, a terrific group uh, throughout the, uh, you know, throughout the agency and uh, and continue to, 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 to move forward steadfast. I'm, I'm appreciative, too, of our uh, county commissioners that have been willing to uh, come forward and help support a new jail, even under some uh, controversy. Um, and, and it's been kind of sad to see some of that. Uh, and, and I think the... Um, Commissioners have been, you know, in my view, kind of unfairly attacked on a lot of venues for really trying to do the right thing. I think I don't think there's anybody um, that has any um, history here that doesn't understand the realization for the that we need a jail. And so I am appreciative of our, our commissioners and their steadfastness. It's not an easy job to work in the jail, and especially yeah, in the buildings job. that we work in yeah, today. Yeah, currently we have three jails. This whole other program we can talk about. You know, and, I, and, it, and it sure could be, but I encourage anybody who has any questions or would like to just come in and for a tour to call your be office, to, ask glad. questions, be more glad to share with them those uh, questions that they may have. Last two weeks, Lieutenant Tim Horse, our Detective Bureau Commander does a terrific job. We appreciate him taking time out of his busy schedule to join us. Well, the clock on the wall says we're just about out of time. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners, the folks here at Fairfield Christian Academy, Kelly Roberts, our executive producer, and certainly to you, the viewers and listeners. Till next week, God bless, and we'll see you right here.